All right, it's time for our next talk, and I'm very honored to present this one because it's a good friend of mine and somebody who's making the world, starting with Holland, a better place, in my humble opinion. Um, the next speaker is the director of the Open State Foundation. Now, as you guys probably know, the government is sitting on a lot of data. They need a lot of data to make the country work, um, to do uh, navigational things and healthcare things, like all, sorts of, all sorts of data. Um, and we're going towards a uh, society where the government is becoming less transparent and asking their citizens to become more transparent, which could be a uh, worrying scenario. And there is one guy with a foundation who's trying to do something about that. His name is Aryan Elfaset, and he will explain today everything about Open Society Foundation. Please give him a hand. Hello. So um, I'm just waiting uh, for the uh, laptop to be ready. Um, so Open State, I will uh, explain you uh, how we got founded. Um, in 2008, there were a group of developers, um, uh, and they invited some civil servants to um, uh, to a place, and uh, they asked the civil servant to um, uh, bring uh, to him an uh, Excel sheet with all the uh, public toilets in the city of Amsterdam. And they went to a supermarket, got some booze, uh, uh, drinks and chips, um, and they spent the day just uh, uh, coding. And at the end of the day, they had an app um, in which you can find uh, all public toilets in Amsterdam. So when you go out, you go to a toilet and you can find it. Uh, in the meantime, this app is now worldwide uh, um, going. Um, that was in 2008. Now we are in 2016, and it's still really hard to get uh, governments to open up their data in a nice way, which you can uh, reuse. Um, uh, is anyone familiar with open data itself? Anyone? So I don't have to explain this sheet, right? Oh, you want to explain? So um, the government sits on a lot of information, and most of it is in documents. But uh, the past uh, years, uh, m most of it is digitalized. Um, and it's paid for uh, by public uh, funds, uh, tax money, uh, and it services public services. Um, so the idea is that uh, governments release and disclose that data for ev anyone to reuse it uh, the way they want it. Uh, and then government starts becoming very reluctant. Um, so if you think about the data, um, you can think about the geographical data, statistics, financial data. Um, weather data, and in the beginning it was uh, uh, that a lot of satellite data became available as open data, so you get a number of uh, weather apps. And this, the next thing was uh, mobility, so cars, TomTom, um, -tom, Google, starting to reuse uh, data on public transport. Um, in the Netherlands, there was one guy who uh, had to contact all municipalities and regional provinces uh, to get the data out of them because there was a national, um, uh, there was only one public transport app, uh, which was controlled by an organization that uh, was, had a monopoly on the data, uh, while the data itself was produced um, with public funds. So this single guy single-handedly took contact with all the municipalities and regional provinces responsible on public transport, and he got the data out, and uh, not only statistic, uh, static data, but also dynamic data. So for example, so you can uh, um, uh, exactly know uh, at what time a bus or a train arrives, um, uh, even though it's uh, delayed. Um, and this data is of such a high quality that suddenly Google decided to use, reuse his data in the GTFS uh, apps, um, and it's now, when the Netherlands was one of the first countries to uh, adopt that. So there is, you need one single guy or some single person to contact governments, especially on a local level or a regional level, to get the data out. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about this process. So the advantages of having government data out there is, uh, is um, you know, a variety of um, uh, advantages. One could be that information is easily available for anyone to use and reuse. Um, it saves time, money, um, and it creates new economy. So new um, um, uh, businesses started, new um, developers started their own business based on government data. Um, one, of the b one of the bigger companies in Holland, uh, which is a big reuser of government data, is TomTom. 
which uses a lot of open data. Uh, anyone with an iPhone, if you click on the, the maps and on the, um, the information tab, you can see all the sources uh, this map uses and reuses. So you see a lot of government sources which are open uh, data. Now, to have government information to be uh, ready for reuse, it has to be available online. So a developer can grab it somewhere f uh, from some place. Um, it has to be available in bulk. So some governments, they try to uh, be transparent by developing APIs, um, but uh, uh, making an API is already making a choice for somebody. Uh, um, so if a developer wants to uh, gain control of the, um, uh, of the information, to be able to freely reuse that information, uh, mostly a developer would like the information to be uh, also available uh, as bulk. Then it has to be machine readable. Now a lot of governments, they love PDF files. Um, and developers, well, we don't really like PDF. And especially not uh, scanned PDFs. Uh, because that's really hard to get the data out. Um, and it has to be openly licensed. So, for example, uh, we have been working, for example, with the public uh, Dutch broadcasting. Um, because it's uh, funded um, uh, mostly uh, with public funds, with tax money. Um, but most of their um, items they produce are sitting behind databases, locked up, because they haven't considered uh, dealing with the copyright issues. So you have um, uh, a lot of contents, uh, especially from the past, um, which can be reused in, for example, education, um, which is locked up behind walls uh, because they haven't dealt with copyright. So um, if you look at um, uh, on a policy level, the whole copyright reform, which is uh, being debated now in Europe, um, is very much needed also to gain, uh, to get most of it out of uh, open data. Um, in the past years, there have been zillions of studies that done by big consultative, uh, consultancy firms uh, looking at the potential economic and societal benefits of open data. Um, some are talking about billions and trillions. Um, McKinsey thinks about three trillion of dollars in potential value in releasing that data and the economy that comes out of it and the reductions of costs uh, for governments that come out of it. Um, so to convince uh, people on the right uh, side of the political spectrum is not that very difficult because you show the amounts of economic value in having governments being more transparent. On the other hand, um, so these values are not being produced immediately because um, if you uh, look at the status of open data in Europe but also uh, elsewhere, um, it's really not in the system of governments to be transparent uh, by themselves or actively uh, uh, sharing data automatically. Uh, and one of the biggest obstacles for that is a culture. So uh, within governments and bureaucratic organizations, uh, the culture of fear of transparency is still enormous. Um, so it's not a technical issue um, and it's not a um, um, political issue because I can convince um, uh, the whole political spectrum from left wing to right wing about the advances of transparency. But I cannot convince a civil servant um, to get away his anxiety or his fear of uh, being transparent. Um, if you look at the, some of the researches, they show also the uh, subjects uh, in which, um, uh, out of which most economic value can be made or commercial uh, uh, can be made. So you see on the top uh, part, it's uh, uh, geographic information, uh, meteorological information, and um, uh, all the way down you see cultural content and political content. Um, and actually as an organization, we focus most of our time on these two. Um, because we think that uh, in a democracy or in, an, uh, in, an, uh, in, a, in a place where the rule of law is important, this kind of uh, content is very much uh, societal, uh, uh, of societal value, which cannot be um, kind of uh, calculated in economic benefit. But uh, at least we need to know as, you know, as um, uh, if you go to elections, you need to know what your parliament has been doing, um, uh, what the government spends its money on, um, and which is called the kind of basic information for democracy or democratic basic information. Um, 
Uh, if you're looking uh, for uh, data from governments, um, since recently um, there is a uh, European data portal which basically grabs uh, uh, government data from different national uh, government portals uh, and makes it uh, searchable. So you can search for data sets, uh, you can uh, type in, in the search in your own uh, language and it uh, scrolls down f uh, in around a half uh, million of data sets from uh, all the European countries and the neighboring countries. But still, if you look for, for example, you want to build an uh, app which can be used um, uh, worldwide or even uh, European, uh, for the same topic, let's say, uh, even if it's uh, cultural data, the data itself comes in various forms, in various formats, uh, uh, and if you look at how much of uh, data is really, really open in terms of format licensing, uh, machine readable, in, uh, downloadable in bulk, um, it's uh, still a less, uh, and it's not a, a lot. Um, this is an example of the Dutch uh, data portal from the Dutch government. You can see uh, there are uh, around uh, 7,000, uh, almost 7,000 uh, data sets. Half of it is the, from the Bureau of Statistics. So uh, the government has more information about us as persons uh, than it shows uh, data about the government itself. So if you're looking for data which describes what the government is doing or what parliament is doing, you will not find a lot of data sets uh, on this portal. Um, so in terms of reuse, um, it started with weather, then mobility, public transport, and now I'm going to show you some reuse of um, uh, data um, for societal and political purposes. So what we have seen in the past years is that open data becomes mainstream. I don't have to explain anymore to a lot of civil servants what open data is, but the hard thing is to get it right. Now, um, every country or almost every country has a parliament and the parliament generates data. Um, minutes of meetings, um, uh, uh, resolutions of um, uh, motions being tabled in parliament, the way a voting costs, um, uh, uh, the, me the, the members itself, um, the working of um, the democratic system, and the reuse of that data. It's not um, uh, with a lot of countries that you have, a, uh, of course, a parliament has its own website, but it's not uh, common for a lot of parliaments to have their data open as open data, so other people can reuse it and build their own apps and websites uh, with that data. Um, in Holland, uh, there is a uh, website called uh, uh, 1848, and it still has to scrape the data from the parliament and from the government, um, which could be released as open data, uh, and I know that the parliament itself is now working on an API, but you can see that these kind of examples pushes parliament to open up their, uh, their data. Uh, and here you see uh, some other uh, examples from other countries, from the UK, uh, you see VoteWords, which uh, was, um, when it started, it had to, um, uh, it, it uh, was uh, writing down the votes in the European Parliament by hand, because the data from the Parliament, how Parliament, uh, how political factions in the European Parliament were voting, was not uh, released as open data. So when VoteWords started, uh, a year later, they pushed also the uh, European Parliament to now release the data on parliamentary votes as open data. Uh, still, there is a lot of uh, European parliamentary data which is not available yet, uh, like minutes of meetings and this kind of stuff. But you can see that um, uh, there is some kind of interlinkage between uh, pushing from the outside to uh, parliaments and governments uh, for the release of the data, showing what reuse could be. So these are the soft side of, uh, of uh, uh, moving um, uh, governments to open up their data. Um, and on the other hand, uh, what we always uh, also do is uh, using the law. So um, a couple of years ago, we were thinking that um, uh, we were looking at the, the budgets of uh, municipalities and that's the way they were spending their money. And in Holland, we have uh, around 400 uh, municipalities. Um, if you look at their websites and you're looking for budgets and, uh, and their accounts, you get it into various uh, different formats. And suddenly we discovered that um, uh, all the municipalities in the Netherlands were obliged by uh, law uh, to provide the Central Bureau of Statistics every quarter with um, this uh, Excel sheet. 
And in the Excel sheet, it sa basically says uh, all their spending on which items, the budget, the spending per quarter. Um, and they have to send that um, uh, a couple of times uh, a year. So for the annual budget and the annual spending, but also on a quarterly basis. And we were thinking if we could uh, uh, ask the uh, Central Bureau of Statistics to get all this data out, then we have uh, we cover the whole of the Netherlands, so we don't have to singly uh, ask every municipality for the data. But unfortunately, the Central Bureau of Statistics said, well, um, this data doesn't belong to us, it's, uh, it belongs to the municipalities, even though it's all government, even the Central Bureau of Statistics is also part of government. Um, so we had still to ask all the municipalities to get their data out. Um, so what did we do? Um, well, we got some, uh, uh, we got a group together and basically we were sending an email to each municipality to a civil servant um, responsible on the, uh, the operations uh, of the municipality and we asked for that uh, Excel sheet. And um, if the answer was no, then we would go to the alderman uh, on finance and ask uh, him or her. If this person said no, we would go to the council and we asked the council to table a motion or uh, an, um, uh, a motion in the council to uh, force the uh, municipality to open up this Excel sheet. And, um, uh, and finally, um, we could have used the law and we could uh, use the Freedom of Information Act to get this data out, but we wanted to uh, convince uh, the municipalities to do it by themselves and to show the, the advantages of sharing this data. So we built this website called openspending.nl where you could, um, uh, where the, we, we included the data and we could compare different municipalities, their spending and their budgets on the basis of the number of households, the, the population, but also the area, um, and show to civil servants that as soon as you release your own data, you, you can uh, compare your own spending and your own budget with, uh, with another municipality in the Netherlands. So they were, um, uh, and that proved to be a very effective tool. So. Uh, in terms of convincing civil servants what would be the benefit for themselves, uh, but also showing that it, uh, um, to have the data there collected, uh, it helps if municipalities release their data. So we started um, uh, approaching all the municipalities and within a year we had the data from 2009 until now from around 200 governments. And with this, uh, we went back to the Central Bureau of Statistics and we said, look, we, um, we have an agreement from 200, at least 200 governments uh, in Holland saying that they want to open up their data. Um, and they, uh, the Central Bureau of Statistics uh, replied to us, they said, yeah, we got a lot of phone calls uh, because of your questions, because some of the municipalities lost their data and they were asking us to provide it to them. Um, but uh, we're going to uh, send out a, a, a memo to all the municipalities that within a month we're going to release this data and if uh, anyone objects then uh, we can take that into account. So they send out this uh, memo to all the municipalities and uh, none of them uh, objected. And since October last year, um, uh, by quarter, the Central Bureau of Statistics discloses this data in bulk um, and is automatically loaded in uh, this website, but it's freely available for anyone to use. Um, and you can, uh, we included, uh, we built our own API uh, using the data, and um, uh, so uh, this is now available. So you can see this whole process of getting the data out there um, uh, is a long road, but we know now that it, the release of the data is not a one-time event because they, uh, there is some kind of hackathon and then uh, they open up the data on Friday and they close it down on Monday, so if you build an app, it, uh, it doesn't work anymore the week after. Uh, and you cannot uh, make uh, developers uh, more angry than uh, by doing that. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a sustainable way of releasing uh, uh, data. Um, the same goes for subsidies. In, in it's, um, I would challenge anyone for any country, it's, um, um, you will not be able to know to which organization or company the government spends subsidies for the whole country. So we took up a challenge. Um, um, we wanted to see to which organizations in the Netherlands subsidies go from government. So it's from local governments, the national government, but also from the European uh, Commission. It's impossible because uh, they publish it in a very different way. Some don't publish it, uh, some publish it in, as a PDF. Um, 
the European Commission publishes uh, subsidy data, but only on 20% of their subsidies because most of them are uh, being redistributed by their national government. Um, it goes through all kinds of organizations, so from the European Commission to the national government to a local government to a recipient. Um, and what we did was we basically uh, contacted local governments, provincial governments, and um, in the national parliament there was a motion table that the national government uh, was forced by uh, the parliament to open up the data from all the ministries. So that we got. Then we uh, approached all the regional provinces uh, and again the um, uh, municipalities. And we built this uh, tool called su Subsidy Tracker um, in which you can s uh, look up uh, a recipient and you can see from which governments they receive uh, a subsidy. Um, this tool was built uh, uh, on a Friday afternoon and a week later we got a call from the, um, uh, uh, the auditor of the national government. And they said, um, they asked us uh, if we were the ones who built that tool and we said yes. Uh, and they were complaining that it was not working. Um, we soon found out that they were still working with uh, Microsoft Explorer um, and it didn't, <laughs> that's why it didn't work. And, but we were uh, kind of surprised that they were using a tool which was built on a Friday afternoon. Uh, and they said, well, it's really handy because we know from research that most of the fraud with subsidies is because the governments don't know from each other to whom they provide the subsidy. So, um, and in a year time, they approached a number of uh, uh, recipients uh, from whom they saw they were getting the same types of money from the same types of uh, governments for the same project which uh, was covered five times the amount of money it needed. So you can see that it saves a lot of uh, tax money to be more transparent. Um, I will go quickly because uh, the time is almost up. Uh, this is on education. Um, we work with the uh, municipality of uh, Amsterdam. They were struggling to help parents to find the right school for their kids. Um, uh, we opened up a lot of data on uh, education, on primary schools. And we built, uh, we uh, p uh, wrote down a challenge, uh, an app challenge, uh, in which uh, people re were reusing the education data and helping um, uh, to help parents uh, uh, find the right school for the kids. Um, so, for example, uh, we used a lot of geo data to, um, because a lot of parents they were questioning, they want to have their kids going to school, um, uh, in which they would not have to cross the street. So only walking on the path, uh, the paveway. Um, uh, so uh, you can use a lot of geodata to kind of take the routes and the shortest routes and then you get to the nearest school and then uh, they would say, well, that uh, school is a public school, we want to go to a private school. Or they would say, this type of education is uh, Montessori, but we want to have it the other way. Uh, so you could, do, uh, you could see what parents kind of motivates um, uh, how to uh, choose a school and use a lot of data to uh, help them uh, uh, make an informed choice. The, um, uh, later uh, we found out, so uh, 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 on a monthly basis, 50,000 parents are using these apps. Um, and we found out that the parents are also using the apps not only for the, uh, to find the right school for the kid, um, but also when they were having, um, uh, in most of the schools they have a board of parents uh, and on a quarterly basis they discuss the performance of the school. So now these parents are using these apps to compare their own school to the, 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 to the same schools in the neighborhood. And they, um, uh, they, ki they kind of enrich themselves with uh, information um, and have a, a more horizontal discussion uh, with the uh, principal of the schools. So they don't have the principal saying, well, you don't know anything about our school or you don't have the right information, but they uh, strengthen themselves and empower themselves by uh, having more information. Um, the last thing I want to show you is uh, on healthcare. Uh, the Netherlands is one of the most uh, spends the most uh, money on um, on healthcare, but uh, we don't know what the prices is of uh, medical treatment. Um, there is a big database uh, held by the National Health Authority, which includes the prices uh, and volumes of medical treatments, but it's not open, and it's um, very um, uh, so uh, because they would say. Well, as a, um, uh, as a person, we pay, you pay health by taxes, but also by insurances. And the insurance are private companies, but also the hospitals are private companies. So you uh, don't have an extra right on uh, transparency. Um, 
but we make the argument that it's, um, uh, the healthcare in the Netherlands is paid by collective, um, uh, by collective funds, uh, whether it's because you are forced to pay taxes and you are forced to have an insurance. In this way, you cannot uh, uh, get out of it. So it's collective uh, amount of money. And uh, we first uh, tried a, a freedom of information request. Uh, that was declined. Then uh, we went to uh, court. Uh, and now we're going to the Council of State, which is the higher court. Um, because uh, they still refuse to, to provide the prices of medical treatments. Uh, they use the argument of privacy, but we don't want um, uh, personal information and we don't want to have the data lead to personal information but we just want uh, the price of a medical treatment uh, and the difference between one hospital to the other. This was done in the United States uh, two years ago uh, because of Obamacare uh, where they noticed a lot of price differences between hospitals for the same medical treatment uh, and in England um, there was uh, uh, a case where they were looking at how uh, doctors uh, were providing medicine, whether it's a gene uh, generic medicine or a branded um, uh, medicine. And uh, they showed uh, this map where you can see a, a lot of uh, regional differences. Um, and the, the, that's the differences between doctors who are uh, uh, prescribing a gener a generic um, medicine. Um, but by uh, looking at this data, they found out they, they could save 400 million uh, pounds uh, on an annual basis just based on the prescribing of two, med two types of medicine. Um, and, in, uh, 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 and in the United States, they showed the price differences between uh, a, a night in a hospital. Um, they would approach the hospital and said, ask them uh, to explain why they were so expensive compared to another hospital. And the ones that had the right answer, then it's fine. But if you don't have an answer, then they could do something about it. So it could save a lot of money. Um, and in uh, one of the earlier slides where I showed you the, uh, the amounts of economic value, in healthcare, uh, almost two-thirds of the advantages of um, uh, being more transparent is on cost reduction. So, and one-third is about new economy, and, uh, new types of uh, uh, businesses uh, starting to uh, reuse the data. But imagine if you can uh, reduce uh, so much cost of such a uh, costly um, uh, endeavor, then it would save taxpayers money, but it could also uh, be invested in better healthcare. Uh, this is an example of uh, culture. So we, uh, w a couple of years ago, we used to start with the Rijksmuseum. Uh, they have uh, around uh, 300,000 digital images of all the paintings, not only which are exposed, but also in their basement. Um, and it's, uh, you can freely download uh, fully CC0, all the uh, high quality uh, images. And we make around, uh, we made around to all cultural heritage institutions in the Netherlands and doing the same thing. Now the, as a, a final thing, one of the biggest uh, problems we faced was that when we were approaching a government, uh, they would, and even if they would uh, be really nice to us, they would say, so what data do you want? And uh, for us outside, uh, but even as a, an ordinary citizen, it's very difficult to know what information the government holds. So one of the things we are working on now, um, uh, and which we advocated uh, a lot for, was asking governments to hold data inventories. So to know what data a government itself holds, without even releasing the data itself, uh, but to n for themselves to know what data they hold what data other governments hold, uh, and to show, uh, and to be transparent about that, so that if I uh, want to start a business or I need data from the government, that I can find, uh, that I can easily find to know to which government or which department or which uh, local uh, municipality I need to go to find the right uh, data. So this is uh, one way, um, and uh, the Netherlands started last year, they had a, a, a national uh, data inventory um, and they are renewing that every year. So that's a, a, a big win in terms of being more transparent about the data itself. And it's not only a win on transparency, but also on privacy, because uh, it helps also privacy rights groups to show and ask uh, questions about what data governments collect and hold and for what purpose, uh, and to be uh, having a, a, at least a debate uh, around that. Um, to round up, uh, on uh, next Wednesday, we organize uh, Transparency Camp Europe, which is an unconference um, held in the city of Amsterdam, um, where around 450 
open data and open government champions uh, from uh, Europe uh, are going. Um, if you want to hear more about these kind of stories uh, and learn and uh, exchange ideas and, um, and practices, um, make sure you uh, register. Uh, you can still do that. It's free, uh, free interest. It's held in Pakhaj Suswijge, so um, I welcome everyone uh, to be there. That's it. Are there any questions? <laughs> yes, it works. Uh, are there any questions? <laughs> I can bring the mic over to you. Go ahead. What made you initially get into this? Well, uh, a long time ago, I was working in the Middle East with the uh, first national ombudsman. And I was uh, working in a country where there was a lot of corruption and, uh, and the government very close. And then I came back to Holland and uh, I was thinking first uh, that it's, well, it's the Middle East and, you know, this is, a, and uh, Holland is a very modern state. And then I discovered that uh, even in a Western democracy as the Netherlands, um, uh, what the government knows about people and citizens is far more than what citizens actually know about their own government. And, um, and if you look at the, uh, uh, from a rights perspective, um, every citizen has the right to uh, privacy, uh, freedom of expression, and uh, the right to information. And actually these three rights uh, makes you prevent uh, the abuse of power. Uh, and I think uh, if you look at all the discussions on digital rights, I think it's the need that these three rights need to be combined and not separately. So you have a lot of people from the, uh, in the open data movement are coming from the privacy movement. And you see now that a lot of people in the open data movement are also uh, intermingling with people in the freedom of information. Uh, so that the, these are all time lawyers and journalists working together. And um, what we have on Wednesday is actually the combination of both civil servants, government officials, uh, developers, but also people from the open data movement, privacy movement, and uh, freedom of expression movement. All right, any other questions? I have a question actually. How far ahead is Holland compared to other modern Western democracies, as you said? Are we, are we advancing well or are we kind of behind a curve at this point? So the interesting thing, if you look at uh, government data, is that uh, the United States is, uh, uh, if you compare internationally, is more transparent in terms of government data than other countries. But the culture in America is that the, the basis is uh, we don't trust the government. And, uh, but the quality of the data itself is worse. So for example, if you compare uh, the United States with Europe, the quality of the data government hold or held uh, is uh, in Europe much uh, of a higher quality than compared to the United States. But in Europe, uh, the trust in governments is much higher than in the United States. So um, imagine if the uh, if uh, European member states of the European uh, open up their data, the advantages are much bigger than uh, open data in the United States. So uh, in this terms, and if you compare the Netherlands within Europe, then you have the UK far ahead of us, uh, and then you have uh, some Scandinavian countries, Germany, um, but also Spain is uh, going ahead, France is going ahead. Uh, and the Netherlands is around, well, if you look at different rankings of uh, uh, around open data, uh, the Netherlands is at least in the top 10, uh, mostly around number six, five, uh, if you could, well, there are different rankings, so. Um, but Holland is doing pretty well, actually. <laughs> but uh, still a long road uh, ahead of us. Enough, enough work for you yeah. for now. All right, uh, I think that was the, were the questions for now. Will you be available for personal yep. questions uh, behind the stage after this? Okay, yep. thank you so much. Please give a hand of applause for Arjan Elfaset. <laughs>